Guys, it's a, it's a pleasure for me to introduce our guest speaker tonight, and uh, I've known him for quite a while. Uh, he grew up in St. Mary's, Ohio, then uh, went to uh, Ohio Northern University, graduated from there, then started his 29-year coaching career at Miami of Ohio. He made stops at uh, Colorado and Arizona, and was the head coach at Howard, was the head coach at Rhode Island. Um, our relationship started, I was the running backs coach at Eastern Illinois University back in 1988. And uh, our staff went over to study where he was. At the time, he was, he was the running backs coach at Indiana. And I sat down with him for probably three hours and just was very impressed on who he was, how he was, the type of person he, he is, and uh, his knowledge of the game and how well he taught the game. He taught me a lot that day. Uh, he then got out of coaching went to, to be the executive director for the BCA, which is the Black Coaches Association, did that for, I think, from 2001 until 2011. And now he's the CEO of his own company, which is uh, Planned Positive Attitude. And our word yesterday was attitude, and I can't wait to hear what he has to say to you guys. This is Floyd Keith. How you guys doing? Good. Boy, I'm going to tell you what. I enjoyed that today, Coach. Uh, got my old blood going in there. Don't tell my wife that I was here because she said, if you ever start coaching again, I'm going to divorce you. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. But, you know, this is really an honor for me. And uh, you've got a wonderful staff. Uh, you got great coaches. I probably know personally at least three or four of uh, your coaches, and uh, I know your head coach, and uh, I know the conference that you're in. Uh, I'm not going to say where I spent some time. You know that school down south, but uh, yeah, you know sometimes your heart is where your fortune lies. Okay, that went over your head. <laughs> okay, we're going to try to work this thing. I hope that uh, you got the uh, slide thing working for me back there so I can move on to the next slide. Guess not. You on now? I was kind of high on you before now. We're working good now. Got it? Might have to turn it on, huh? Does that help? <laughs> Listen, I'm a damn coach. What am I supposed to know, right? <laughs> okay. I want to start first and tell you a little bit about me. Not a lot, but a little bit. But you know, we are right now where we all plan to be. And I've never felt that anything, I never tried to leave anything to luck or chance. And that started long ago because you can make a difference. You really can. You got a special opportunity. You're at Purdue. You know how special that is? That's real special. There's a lot of people right now back in your hometown who wish they were at Purdue. My background coach told you, you know, I, Coach for 30 years, 19 an assistant coach, 11 as a head coach, became executive director of uh, a national governing body, which was the black coaches and administrators, which basically was kind of fighting for social justice. Stood up, took some shots, because not everybody really believed in some of that. But it was something that I felt in my heart was true because it, there were some disadvantaged opportunities and I thought that everybody deserves an opportunity in whatever field that they're in, involved in. The other part of this is that when I became, made a decision, and if you ever want to be a CEO of your own company, just start one, okay? But I wanted to give back 
to those that helped me get where I was. And professionally, you know, there's the same way with your plan. There's ascension where you you got a path and you're trying to get where you think you want to be. And then once you get there, it's called maintenance. Where you're trying to maintain the level that you have. And then when you really start to feel it, and when you really start to give back is when you give service. When you give back to others. And that's a little bit like a team. When you really start to get it is when you all care about each other and you become one. You know, I sat over there where Coach was last year, about this time, and then I'm here this year, about this time. And there's a big difference. I see the way you come in that door, you feel good about yourself, you look good about yourself. You got a little bounce to your step. That's good. Last year, you really didn't even know what was going on, right? You got to get used to everybody. Hell, you know the terminology, you're advanced, you're moving there. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. The other piece to this, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my, my family. The key when you get married, folks, is you got to outpunch your cupboard. Did I go over your head, too? <laughs> <laughs> if you saw my wife, you'd understand why I said that. <laughs> Pretty nice. <laughs> I got a 19, a 16, a 14, and an 11. I'm 66. No biography. <laughs> <laughs> Own a blue pill, never saw one. <laughs> My wife is a PhD. She's 19 years younger than me. We've been married for 20 years. She's the vice president of the American College of Sports Medicine. She's the first African American ever to be in that capacity. She's pretty damn good. So when I tell you I'll punch your coverage, marry someone that you admire and you're with. She's my best friend. She loves football. So we're going to get along forever. I got a wonderful family. But we're going to talk about your plan. I know a little bit about it. Don't know it all. But I know it's leave no doubt. But the other part of this is within that framework that you established, each of you have a responsibility that you have a personal piece to this. I know it's been talked about, but I don't know if anybody's ever told you that there's a way <coughs> for you to succeed. And you've been around game plans your whole life. Everybody's lined it up for you. you never, have you ever gone into a game you didn't have a plan? Never, right? Why in your life, academically and athletically, would you ever just tread water? And if you really want to get something, you really want to go after something, get a plan. Make a plan. Invest in you. <coughs> And when you start to invest in you, you're going to see great results. And if you'll, stay, if, if you'll give me your attention for about 20 minutes, I'm going to give you a formula that will work in anything you do. And I mean anything. It's simple. It's been out there. And it's free. Tonight. It's free. Now, if you come and ask me a couple years from now, it ain't free. <laughs> I got to live. I got to pay for that 19, 16, 14, and 11. Okay? Tonight, it's free. Now, you see those guys? Let's play that team. They don't have a plan. They got holes in it. 
I don't know who the hell they are, but we got to schedule them, Daryl. Huh? They didn't, under, they didn't understand about the woodpecker. Okay? The woodpecker's causing them a problem. They aren't together. And there's a leak. And when we have leaks in there, it's not going to work. Attitude. You know, I always felt, you know, are babies born speaking the language? No. Huh? They aren't. Do people learn to have prejudices? Yes. You're born in this world with a blank sheet. The winner's edge is not gifted in birth and high IQ or talent. The winner's edge is all in attitude, not aptitude. Attitude is the criterion for success. If you can believe it, your mind can achieve it. And once your mind is tattooed with negative thinking, our chances of long-term success diminish. You got to start right there. You go back. If you look in the, in the Bible, what I acquired and what I eventually called planned positive attitude, it's right there. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 8. Ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks will receive, and he who seeks will find, and the door will be opened to him who knocks. There is nothing that says you can't achieve. All you got to do, knock on the door. No one's going to give it to you. There ain't anybody going to give it to you because they all want to do the same thing. You know, as a coach, I never believed in saying a prayer for victory. I'll tell you why. Because all across the country, at 60 games, everybody's praying to win. <clears throat> but you know what I used to always pray for? The strength. You pray for strength. When you pray for strength, God will give it to you. He'll give it to you from the top of your head down to the bottom of your toes. Because he can't let everybody win. But he'll give you the strength. And if you believe that. I'm 12 years old. Age of 12. True story. I'm sitting out in a backyard and I'm saying, you know, there's some magic to something here. Because I said to myself, I'm an African American in the town of 10,000. The only people that look like me all have my last name a key. True story. What are my chances, man? I'm in northwestern Ohio. How am I going to get out of here? Dad was a livestock agent. Came home every night, was hell to sit around the table with him because he smelled every animal was on him. But I loved him because he did what he had to do. So I had a dream. I said, I want to be either a lawyer or a football coach. I wrote it down. And the very first beginnings of planned positive attitude came from a little piece of paper at the age of 12. And I still have the piece of paper. I'm going to take you on a journey. And as we go on this journey, there's a couple axioms. And you'll get this, but you got to say yes to these six things right here or we can't travel. Or you can sit here and not listen. And it won't matter, but if you say yes to these six things, then we're on the same page. Okay? <clears throat> Statistics usually say if you're talking to, to 100 people, you got to usually repeat it six times during the process of a month for it to sink in. My hope is that at least 10 of you get this and will take this and work it. Okay? And I'll guarantee you it'll work for you because it worked for me. Number one. Does everybody believe that your attitude can and will direct your life? Yes, sir. Ah, hell, give me an answer, will you? Yes, will it or not? Yes, sir. 
Yes. There you go. I'm feeling you now. Okay? You guys ate too much. Next one. You can control your attitude by how you think. You believe it? Yes, yes sir. Damn right you can. You think every day. Get up out of that bed every day or tomorrow and you think something. You think it. You think it. You think it. Man, it will become part of you. Number three. You become what you think yourself to be. You know, you get up out of there, man, you walk out of there, you say, I'm good. I'm good. Hell, man, I never lost a game. I just ran out of time. Never lost. I didn't make the damn clock long enough. Keep swinging. Keep fighting. Because most of the time, man, this is a true story, to be great, to be great. There's less competition at that 10% because not everybody wants to pay the price to get there. The rest of the 90% will just kind of go through it because it doesn't hurt. There's less competition to be great. To control your life, you must control your thoughts. Do you believe that? Yes, sir. Dang right you can. Okay? Think in negative terms and you'll receive negative results. You know, it's like the food you take in, your mind, your mind. You know, we hardly use more than 15% of the capacity of this thing right here. Shoot, they even got a movie out now. What's that, Lucy? Yes, sir. Huh? <laughs> How about that rascal? <laughs> huh? Let's get that girl in here. Yeah. Let's sick her on a few of these dudes. <laughs> huh? Yeah, blow them up. Let's get after them. All right, get Lucy in here. It's right there. It's in your head. Okay? Now, conversely, folks, you think in positive terms, you receive positive results. So, man, you've got to feed yourself positive all the time. All the time. You look at a glass, man, it's not half empty, it's half full. It's what's inside it. Here's the deal. It's called Plan Positive Attitude. It's my trademark. It took me a few years to get that done. It cost me about 1700 bucks to get it done, too, as well. 